This is Garrett Rhodes from the Eastern Pennsylvania Business Owners Network here inviting you to our initial podcast of the Eastern Pennsylvania Business Owners Network Small Business Networking Showcase. I'm here this evening with my good friend and co-coordinator of our Lehigh County chapter, Mr. Nate Klein of Infradap, your specialist in IT services. Nate, introduce yourself and say hi. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining. Uh, again, my name is Nate Klein. As Gary pointed out, I uh, am a senior account executive with a uh, managed service provider over in Trexler Town called Infradap. And uh, hey. thank you for having me. Right on. And for those of you who don't know Nate already, he's a new dad. So if he's uh, yeah. quiet or kind of tired, those of us that are parents, you'll know why. <laughs> so this guy is a soldier for showing up tonight. Uh, before we get into our podcast this evening, I do want to mention that this inaugural broadcast of the Small Business Networking Showcase brought to you by the Eastern Pennsylvania Business Owners Network is dedicated to two of our closest networking friends who have retired from labor and gone on to the big mixer in the sky. Our friends Howie Gelbert, who passed away a few years ago, and Debbie Berger, who passed away just last fall. I'm sorry, fall of 2020. For those of us who knew you, you will be missed. But for those of you just joining our podcast, you're going to learn what this is all about. Our mission and purpose is that the Eastern Pennsylvania Business Owners Network and the Small Business Networking Showcase podcasts that are sponsored by EPBON, which you'll learn about in a few minutes, are designed for business owners, professionals, and tradespeople of all kinds to take advantage of the benefits and profits that come with successful networking. Our events and podcasts are open to anyone who wishes to join us. We're an open group and all are always welcome to attend. We want to start off our meeting today with our quote of the day, which I have to quote, I have to give credit to Mr. Klein for creating when he started the uh, Lehigh County group. So our quote of the day and the basis of our podcast today is it's not what you know, it's who you know. Now, before we start arguing about the efficacy of that particular comment, obviously we have to know what we're doing in business and be experts in what we do. But I was 35 years old before I realized, you know, maybe it's nice to know people. And that's what business networking is really all about. Uh, Nate, did you want to join in and have anything to say about that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, networking is such a crucial part of, of just business in general, being out there, developing business, making those connections and uh, relationships, uh, because we all know that, and maybe we don't know, that networking does take time. It's not something that happens overnight, um, and it's something that you need to work on and develop uh, and, and be consistent with. So, you know, for those of you who are, who are newer to networking, which actually is another uh, topic that we're going to dig into eventually, um, you know, it, it, the one thing I always like to tell people is it's like, like anything, like any good relationship, it takes time. And it's not just a one-way street. It's a two-way street, right? It takes manual, um, you know, concerted, targeted effort from, from both ends and both parties. Um, and, and really, it's just like any good relationship, you have to take time and dedicate the time to get out there and, and put forth the effort um, and let people know that you're, that you're dealing with somebody who really cares, right? Um, you know, don't make false promises, right? That's one thing is if you're out there and if it's, all, if it's one-sided, it'll show through. People will, will see through that. So be, be true, right? Those are some, some key, for, key things to think about when you're out there in networking. Uh, but I'm going to go on a rant and I'm going to stop now because uh, you asked a simple question. And I'll, I'll take it on. I'll keep going with it. Um, but the one thing I did want to say is that networking does take time and it's something that you have to, you know, consistently put forth the effort. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Nate. And I and I get what you're coming from because with the two of us, we could probably talk about networking for hours, but our listeners <laughs> only have so much time. So we want to respect our the time of our listeners and just kind of focus on things. We're going to be doing certain subjects at certain times. These podcasts will be dropping on a pretty regular basis. So we're looking forward to it. But tonight's podcast is all about the benefits of participating in networking groups. Why would I want to do this? I can tell you as someone who's run a networking organization, two of them actually for over 12 years, that even on the internet, I see people like, oh, don't go to networking. Networking wastes time. Networking doesn't work. Well, tonight, 
Nate and I are going to talk about a few stories that we've had that really make you realize that's not really true. There's a lot of value to who you know, as well as what you know. And I'll start with an easy example. I have a sister who, lives, who lived in Colorado, graduated top of her class, University of Colorado Boulder, in her chosen field, spent two and a half years trying to get a job in her field in the Denver metro area. Couldn't do it, which was ridiculous because she was very qualified. She had the degree. However, after two and a half years of looking for something because nobody would hire her unless she had experience in the field. So those of you who are recent college graduates, I think you're feeling my pain. However, last year at the beginning of 2021, she got a call from somebody she went to high school with who happened to be running a lab in Plymouth meeting at the time that was doing COVID testing. You can imagine that the demand for her services was pretty high. So they hired her on the spot, over the phone. I flew out to Denver, helped her drive back to Plymouth Meeting, Pennsylvania. And today she's still working for that company, has gotten a number of raises and is very happy there. I say all of that to say that is proof in the pudding is that it's not just what you know, it's who you know. So moving on with that, when you go out to business networking, why on earth would we ever want to waste our time going to some networking breakfast or networking lunch and meeting people that may or may not ever be our clients? Nate, you want to weigh in on why we would do that? Yeah, it's just like a gym membership, right? Why would you go to a gym membership when you leave the gym and there's no physical difference, right? Um, and, and same with dieting, right? The same concept and principle behind dieting. If I eat a salad today, am I going to be a five pounds less tomorrow? Chances are no. Uh, you know, so that it's a matter of consistency. I it's tried a matter that of earlier today. It didn't work. <laughs> right. It doesn't work. Trust me. I know you have to have those salads on a consistent basis for the next three months for you to really see any gains. Right. And you have to go to the gym, you know, for the next three months to really see any muscle growth. Um, and you have to, it's just consistency. Right. And, it, and that's, that's how it is. It, that's how I treat networking. Right. Um, you know, chances are we're going to go out and meet a lot of the people that are in the same types of roles we are in business development sales. So they're not ultimately our end user or prospects or, or our clients, right? Or they may be depending on your industry. But for me in the B2B space, typically those are not the people who I ultimately want to talk to. However, they know people who I do want to talk to. And, you know, like any relationship, you, you know, it, it's there to, uh, to be, it's a two-way street, right? You want to develop those relationships to be able to not only uh, help yourself, but ultimately maybe help them out with a relationship that maybe you can introduce them to. And I found that being a, a connector and just somebody who uh, has a lot of influence and knows a lot of people, I can help solve a lot of challenges. I know you're the same way, Garrett. Uh, if, if I come to you with a problem, whether it be in my personal life or my business life, chances are, if you can't help me, you know somebody who can. And that's really, you know, some of the benefits of, of doing, of networking on a consistent basis um, is growing that network and those relationships and forming those and establishing and forging those bonds with those people. So you have somebody in that Rolodex spot when somebody comes to you with a problem, you know how to answer it and know how to solve it. And maybe you don't personally, but you know somebody who can. So that's, that's a big piece of it. Yeah. And that, that's, I've, I've found that to be true myself when I started an advertising company. You know, it's when you go to a business networking event, it's not necessarily, and of course, this is one of the big mistakes people make when they start going to networking events. When you go, it's not necessarily about whether or not you can do business with the people in that room. What's important is who do they know? How can you get to right. know them? Maybe figure out a connection that they might need, a way to help them. And when you do that, that frees up a whole world of people who are going to try to refer business to you because business networking is all about referrals. We're going to talk about the process of that just a little bit later in today's podcast. But I do just want to bring that up that you don't really know. When I started this adventure back in 2012, I met a man named Rich Plinky. A rich Plinky had a very unique business, how to sell the plague. Now, yeah, yeah. 
being a marketing expert or a self-thought marketing expert, I'm like, who the hell would name their business how to sell the play? But you know what? <laughs> Memorable. And over the years, I got to become friends with Rich. We eventually did business together. And I realized this guy really knows his stuff. And I have a lot of other people that I've met. When I first went to my first business networking meeting, I remember this. I'll never forget. It was Lehigh Valley Elite run by Michael Madden, which still exists today. In fact, I'm going to their lunch this Thursday over at the Texas Roadhouse in Easton. In Easton, yeah. Yeah, you know, but he's still doing it today, 15 years later. And you got to ask yourself, why would somebody run a networking group for that long? I can tell you from someone who runs one, it's not profitable. We're not getting rich doing this, but we do it for the people that we meet, the people we can help, the people we can connect. And the more we help those other people get connected, the more we get connected with people we need. It's very karmic. There's a lot of karma to networking, which might sound a little wishy-washy, a little Birkenstock, granola eaten, crystal the same. <laughs> but, you know, I just, as you can probably already tell, I'm kind of not that guy. Uh, but, you know, there's truth to it. There's absolute truth to it. And that's why I love hanging out with these people. I mean, there's a woman named Lori D'Onofrio Galley, who for years ran the Northeastern Berks Chamber of Commerce. And she was so good at it. She built up that organization. And she's gone on now, since I haven't seen her in a few years, to develop her own consultancy. I'm sorry to say, I don't remember the name of the consultancy. I don't have it here in front of me in my little stack of stuff here. Yes, I am jipping that phrase, you know, going with people that I know and talk to. But she is brilliant at what she does. And I learned a lot from her as well. So when you're talking about networking, just keep in mind, when you start going to these events, don't focus so much on who in this room can I do business with? Who can I sell stuff to? That's not the point. That is never the point. The point is to become known to develop relationships. And we'll talk about the, the cycle of those relationships after we go through a few actual real life examples of how networking works for you and works for other people that you meet. So Nate and I both have a few stories. Nate, did you want to start with a story of either A, how networking benefited you or how you were able to benefit somebody else from networking? Yeah, sure. And the one of the, I have a lot of them. Um, we all, and you asked me, we only have enough yeah. time for the podcast to hit a There's a lot of them and, and I'm going to pick, I picked a couple cause you, you prompted me with those questions earlier and, and I didn't know where to start. And I, cause there's so many of them that I lost track. So I'm, I'm pulling deeper from the memory bank, but also more recently, cause I've had a few just this past week, the last week where um, I referred somebody out and they ended up doing a lot of business together and they still do. So I'll, I'll reserve that for the latter part for my story where I benefited um, is through throughout my time and, and just understanding how networking works and getting out there. Like you mentioned, is, is just to really get that referral, but just to get the, 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 uh, the network base, right. The of people of, of uh, folks out there in the business community that, you know, may not, again, may not be my, are not my direct target, right. But are out in the business community, um, which is where I thrive, right. In the business community. So, um, you know, I, I volunteered my time for the greater Lehigh Valley chamber of commerce as an ambassador. I chaired, uh, the, the council for a couple of years. Um, and now I serve as a media past chair, but, you know, throughout my time in the chamber, um, we, which is for another day, but we, um, I, I get out to a lot of events, right? I'm out at all the, you know, the, the mastering your memberships, all the grand openings. I golf a lot. There's a lot of golf events. And one of my most Wait memorable times. Let me is interrupt a, you for a moment. Sure. Are you suggesting to me that business deals are cemented on a golf course? Oh, I can't tell you how much, like so many times that I've closed. The hell golf you course. say, does that actually I, I, happen? I, I hate to sound cliche and, and kind of like, oh, you know, like, but yeah, it actually really does. Um, and, and it's so weird because the one golf course, the tournament I was in, it was for the Emmaus Main Street Partners. Okay. This is another chamber foundation or chamber uh, council. Um, they uh, have an annual golf tournament in Emmaus. Um, 
at Green Pond Country Club, usually, I, I believe is where they host it. And they didn't have enough people the one year. So as an ambassador, we had the perks of being an ambassador. Sometimes we get to go to events for free. Um, but obviously, we're there to help and volunteer. But hey, the perks of getting a free slot in a golf tournament it comes with the tear, right? So I got a free seat. And I joined a, a really cool foursome uh, with actually some other chamber volunteers. Um, you know, Nate, like, uh, I have often wanted to be part of a foursome. <laughs> Not that kind. Okay. Yeah, this is Sorry, please. Yeah, a different type of foursome. But th this one was, uh, you know, it, it was awesome because I got paired up with uh, Mike. I can't think of his last name. It's drawing a blank, but he, Jaboa Enterprises. He's one of the principal partners there. Uh, I can't, I'm drawing, drawing a blank, but uh, he, he also is a member of one of the councils and serves on the council, but he uh, had a team where somebody backed out and I joined the team and I got paired up with the technology director for a private school down in Perkyoman Valley. Um, so, you know, over the, just throughout the course of the tournament, we started to get to talking and getting to know each other. And he, I learned that he was the IT director for uh, for this school. Right. And my mind was blown. I'm like, wow, what are the odds that I get paired up? Now this was sheer luck, right? What are the odds I get paired up with somebody, my direct target, who I'm actually looking to, to actually go and talk to and, and solicit and, and tell them well, how great we are. Right. Well, I didn't do any of that. I just was all questions and all ears, right. Trying to learn about him and his role and what the school is, what their needs are. And, 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 and honestly, a lot of the time was just spent getting to know him per, on a personal level, you know, knowing that he likes the same type of music. I like knowing that he's a, a really bad golfer. Like I am, you know, the, that is, that's really where most of the magic happened. Right. But we didn't talk shop too much, really much at all, to be honest with you. And, you know, we left that tournament. It, it was an awesome time. Um, and, and years passed. Right. I reached out to him a couple of times. Oh, during that time, they were having issues with their phone system and InfraDAP specializes in telephony and provides uh, enterprise grade communication platforms for businesses of all sizes, you know, small, medium enterprise. And yeah, he's saying how much trouble he's having with his current vendor and, you know, how the system doesn't work. And they chose a, a one man band and how when they try to contact him for support, the guy never answers or when he does, it takes him weeks. Right. So I'm like, well, you know, I learned a little bit that I learned enough to say, Oh, wow. You know, we should, we should keep in touch, you know? And, um, over the years I reached out and the first year after the tournament, it, uh, it didn't, he mentioned that it just wasn't the right time. They had a lot of other projects going on. So I just kept in touch. Right. And I saw him at another event. Um, I actually saw him going to an incubus concert back in when music fest, when they were at music fest one year and, that was, that was wild. And, and that was a reminder to go, Hey, reach out and have a touch point. So long story short, um, I reach out again and finally they they have enough capacity and, and uh, time in their schedule to, to fit me in. We go in and I, I, you know, wow them, as I mentioned, I would, and, and, you know, and, uh, it, it's all business from there, man. They've been a happy client since, uh, uh, well, it's been about two years now. And since then, we've actually done a couple other projects for them. So it's, spa it's spawned with the phone system or on a golf course, right? So we took over the phone system. Then we started doing some, uh, like we did an interactive display panel for their conference room. And then we ended up uh, quoting out a, uh, a very large camera project, security and surveillance project for the school. They have not done yet, but they anticipate doing and, and bringing up that conversation next year. So that's my success story, right? I, it happened on a golf course. It sounds cliche, but it really, you know, it really, uh, that was, that was uh, a, a true moment in history and one of my most successful networking stories I've had to date. But it stems from the fact that when you went there, you didn't really have a a an agenda. Yeah, you didn't have an agenda. You just happened to meet the right person at the right time. That is one of and the- And that'll happen. Trust me when I tell you folks, as digital as we've gone, as much as technology has advanced business, there's never, ever going to be an exception to face-to-face -face communication. Personal relationships are always going to matter, whether they're developed online or in person. But that in-person thing, it's imperceptible, 
but it's really important which is why I'm going to tell you a story about how networking benefited me. I happen to be a real estate wholesaler and syndicator. I do have a real estate license as an agent, but I don't really act as one. I like to buy rental properties when I can, and I love to find these deals and package them for my clients. So back in 2010, when I was with Mid-Atlantic Wholesale Properties, which I still own today, but back then I had two partners. There was a Wednesday evening. I had nothing to do. I knew there was a real estate investor meeting in Clinton, New Jersey, which is about a 45 minute drive from where I live, but it was a subgroup, maybe 12 people show up. I usually went, I knew the 12 people in the room. I figured, yeah, I got nothing else to do. I'll go and see the 12 people I already know. I went there, walked in, paid my fee to get in the door, whatever it was. And by the way, if you're hung up on networking fees to network with people, pack up your shit and go home. Sorry. <laughs> and by the way, this is not ever going to be a PG podcast. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who know me, you know I'm going to let stuff slip. And for those of you who don't know me, you're going to get to know me real soon. Okay. <laughs> that is willing to stick out to get hammered. So anyway, I go to this meeting and I go there and sure enough, there was the 12 to 14 people that I already knew. But there was another young lady who was sitting off to the side by herself. Now, her name is not Amy, but we'll call her Amy for the purposes of anonymity. She was sitting there in 2010 at a table in this meeting room in a hotel room in the Hampton Inn in Clinton, New Jersey, by herself and nobody was talking to her. And I thought, are you kidding me? So I, you know, I already knew the other people in the room. I didn't go there to meet them. I went there to meet new people. So I walked over and I introduced myself. I said, hi, I'm Garrett Rhodes from Mid-Atlantic Wholesale Properties. And you are? Now, granted, her name is not Amy. She is from another country. She has a very thick, heavy accent. I, I think I can go so far as to say she was a Chinese national. And so... <laughs> You know, she was very self-conscious. She, she didn't want to talk to me. And I said, hi, I'm Garrett Rhodes. You know, do you mind if I sit with you this evening? And she said, oh, you know, I'm sorry. My, my English is, is not so good. And I looked at her. I said, Amy, don't worry about it. Your English is way better than my Mandarin will ever be. It's <laughs> And I could see the weight of the world come off her shoulders. Oh, that's a good, that's a good and icebreaker. At that time. We were doing deals in Allentown, Pennsylvania, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And, you know, we were in Clinton, New Jersey. And I come to find out she was from the Princeton area. She was just there to learn about real estate investing. She really didn't know anything. She wanted to make some contacts and she wasn't sure what to do. So we agreed during that meeting that I would meet up with her at the Clinton Station Diner in Clinton, New Jersey, again, 45 minutes away from where I live, but near where my wife grew up. And for those of you from New Jersey, you'll hate this joke. I like to say that I took the only good thing New Jersey had and I imported it. <laughs> However, <laughs> I immediately have enemies and that will be okay. Uh, but yeah, if you can't yeah. take a joke, please don't listen to the podcast. There will be lots of them. Anyway, I meet <laughs> up with her a week later at the diner. I have no expectation of doing business with this woman at all. She was talking about buying townhouses or multi-units in the area where she lived in Princeton, New Jersey. But I went, met up with her. I answered her questions, explained a lot of the basics, went over things that you were, you know, the basic mathematical formulas to make money. And, you know, at the end of this three hour long conversation, when we were done, she looked at me and she goes, well, could I just buy deals from you? And I was like, yeah, 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 you can buy deals from us. Absolutely. We'll run them for you. We'll make you money. And she went, now, of course, I didn't act like this when I was talking to her. But in my brain, I was going, I didn't expect this. I had no idea. I literally was just paying forward the knowledge that I had learned from others with no expectation of a return. We wound up selling her two properties. She wound up referring us to a friend of hers that bought seven properties from us, who referred us to a friend of hers that bought 13 properties from us. 
that three hour investment of my time, let's call it five hour investment of my time just in that lunch, plus the five hours going to the meeting and being there and coming back. I'm 10 hours into this investment with no expectation of a return, netted over a quarter of a million dollars in wholesale fees to myself and my partners over the course of three years. Yeah, that's that's an amazing story. And and really never, what our, I think- Ever know. B- both of our stories, I think, comes down to, to this principle. And it's a, it's a principle Wayne Gretzky had stated. You miss 100% of the shots you, you don't take, right? Exactly. If I right? say, and that's oh, just I'm being out there, Survivor that's... or Dancing with the Stars, I'm not going to make any money. I'm guaranteed not to make any money. And right. if I spend enough time doing that, I'll probably feel the IQ points just slipping out of my brain as I watch it. Yeah. 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 I mean, just for being there, you know, it, it's, it's not every time we find an active opportunity like that out networking, but they do happen, right? They happen to, to, to us. We both had stories, right? And, and both are, are better off today than we were, you know, if we didn't have that, uh, met that relationship. And, and mine's still prof- prospering, you know, still profitable today. I still um, have that relationship and I, I value that relationship. And, and you know what? It's helped us get deeper into that vertical too, because in B2B sales, you know, having a customer in that vertical means everything because it, it's a community, you know, other schools want to know that you deal with their schools, right? With, with, you know, their peers. Um, and then just having that resource and that local referral, it, it means it's tremendous, right? It means so much in the, in the world of business when I'm going to the table for other clients and other targets and other schools that I'm uh, looking to acquire, you know? Right. So. so I'd like to tell a second story while we're doing this inaugural broadcast of our small business networking showcase. And that's yeah. in reverse. There's been a lot of times over the last 12 to 14 years where I've met somebody and I've been in a unique position where, hey, maybe I know the right person and I can connect one. One of the more recent ones just happened this year. Actually, I'm, that's not quite true. I first met the lady in December, but let's pretend that I met her in January. Uh, but her name is Rosalinda Lieta. Uh, she is part owner of r r Improvements. They're a contracting company. They fix things. Now, you can imagine in today's environment, someone in their business is highly sought after. And as founder and coordinator of Lehigh Valley Real Estate Investors Club, I can tell you we are always, always looking for tradespeople to come out to networking events. Please, if you are in the trades, if you have a friend or family member or someone from your chosen house of worship that is in the trades, who's looking for more work, please send them our way. We can make them busy. But I will tell this story of Rosalinda and our and our improvements. I met her in December of 2021. And since December of 2021 to today, in fact, she called me today, this afternoon, no joke, to tell me about the referrals that I had given her and the jobs that she had gotten. I got her over $35,000 worth of work in three months. And you know how much she had to pay me for it? Zero. Absolutely nothing. I didn't demand any commissions. I don't want any kickbacks. All I want to know is, please take good care of my people. And she has. And that's where networking comes in. It's not about getting. If you give enough over time, you will get. Right. As we mentioned earlier, this is a very karmic thing. You never know where that lightning bolt of a, the next referral is going to come from. I personally, having been doing this for so long, I have so many stories. We could go on for hours. I will share them in future podcasts. So please stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you download our podcasts. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. We're going to be showcasing small business owners. We're going to be talking about thing, cool things that people find, how to network, how to give a commercial, one-to-one etiquette, et cetera. We're just going to have an absolute blast with this podcast. Uh, Nate, do you happen to have a story of maybe where you were able to refer a lot oh, yeah. of to somebody else? 
Yeah, absolutely. And I have a, I have a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a couple of them that are actually really recent. They, they apply only here. Have time uh, for one, similar, brother. Only time yeah, for one. Well, well, real quick, there's the one, um, you talk about the trades, there's such a demand right now and such a short supply. And, and that is really, you know, I, I've, I've helped a couple of people out, uh, with that, you know, and, and putting, linking, um, some friends up with, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't take any time or it takes time. It doesn't cost a dime for you to go and support your, your friend or your networking contact, anybody you're talking and engaging with, it doesn't cost you a dime to go and pump their business up. You know, if it's a small business owner and they just created a Facebook page, go and invite, there's a way for you to go to their page and invite all of your friends to like their page. You go to the community tab on Facebook on their page and you go to invite friends and you can invite your whole friend list to, to like their business. I just did that for one of my friends who just launched a, uh, uh, concrete resurfacing company. And he already, I already got a lead in for him saying it's another small business owner, right. That, um, just opened up with a barbecue company last year, just signed up with the chamber not too long ago. And he's just getting started, but he has, you know, brick and mortar and some things he's looking to, uh, get the, the, the floors all refinished and resurfaced. So that right there was an organic, um, you know, uh, a lead from me just reaching out and helping a friend out. Now, granted, that was one of my friends, but that's something I would do to a, somebody I'm engaging with on the network side of things. Cause networking should happen. The real networking is only designed to get you in touch with the people that you think you could help, uh, and, and, and take that offline to really get deep and go deep with, um, and get more intimate with, you know, you're supposed to do the one-on-ones and that's really what, you know, when you talk about the, effectiveness of networking and all the components that, that go into it that you mentioned earlier, Garrett, you talk about um, how to how to really effectively network and what are the key components to that? Well, it's taking the actual time to do those one-on-ones to really understand who the other person is so you can properly identify opportunities for them, right? I had a one-on-one hey, networking. If, if I may interrupt you and I apologize for doing so, yeah. we're no. focusing on referring business to other people. In one of our new, one of our upcoming podcasts, we're going to talk about the mechanics of networking and teach new people how to do this the right way, which is why we want you to subscribe and like our pages. Yeah. But talk about the, yeah. So an actual refer a lot of business in person. Actual referral that um, was a part of our Epon group that I, I I did two of them this past, well, the past two meetings, I've had two. Um, Mike Fazio, who was a newer member to our group. Right. Uh, yeah. was a title title company, right? He's a traveling title company. Um, and Chris, I'm sorry, he's a traveling notary. And Chris can Ducey, also do mobile closes. Right. Correct. He can do mobile closes. And Chris Ducey, who owns a, uh, uh, a land transfer uh, company, uh, I, I linked them up and they already started doing business together because, you know, Chris, Mike makes it easy. He comes to you wherever you're at and gets it all done. Um, so here's a couple of shout outs to some really good networkers that are out there, but that was a really positive, uh, experience for everybody involved. And, uh, another one was interlaced communications with, um, uh, with, uh, Lee Smitten. Uh, Lee Smitten. Lee Smitten. yeah, yeah, yeah. Lee Smitten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Quentin, her, uh, her, right. uh, her her news director of sales. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so now, I, folks, I just, let me interrupt re- Mike for a second. Did you notice how we both knew these people? <laughs> now, no one understand. I met Elise and Quentin in Kutztown at our Kutztown meeting, and Nate met them in Fogelsville. This is why this is we met these people independently of each other. Yeah. So, Nate, I apologize for the interruption. No, no. I, that, honestly, that was uh, that was the other one I wanted to comment on. Is you know, I, I uh, come across in my industry, I come across web design leads all the time and interlaced communications does web design InfraDap does not. So there, but naturally I come across opportunities that we can't service. And I look to satisfy a client need. I want to make sure that my client's taken care of. So how am I going to do that? I'm, I'm going to go and recommend them to the people I know can get the job done. So, you know, that that's really how. Cool. The, so you're at, able I, to, with your contacts in your industry, send some business over to Elise at Interlace Communications and go MAVA. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So folks, for those of you listening to our podcast, you're kind of realizing that networking goes both ways. 
So what I want to talk about here is people say, and, and believe me, I have heard this and I'm not exaggerating a million times. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe it's only a few dozen times. But people that I meet and they're like, oh yeah, I tried that networking thing. I went to a meeting. Nobody gave me any business. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, because you went with the wrong flipping attitude. You don't yeah. go to a networking business going, who in this room can I sell my product and service to? If you do that, you're a Neanderthal. Call yourself a knuckle dragger and you know nothing about sales and marketing. <laughs> if you go to a networking event, it's for networking. The purpose is to get to know people. Think about your own private business and personal purchases. Uh, let's say you're going to replace the heating system in your home. Are you going to just open up the phone book, call somebody random, you know, or, or something like, no, you're going to ask your friends and neighbors, hey, do you know anybody good? You can go to any source of online sources for these referrals. And by the way, when you're going to online places, Keep in mind that most of those websites, the people that are on them pay to be there. Even Angie's List and um, what is a home advisor. And at least it, that's not real. Talk to your neighbors and your friends. You're going to get that information from people. There is somebody I know in the networking space who I happen to know for the last seven, eight years of my life. Uh, we both volunteer for the same uh, young men's youth leadership organization called D. Malay. Really good friend of mine. I trust this guy to death. His name is Ed White. Ed White is a former lawyer. He's been a journalist. He's done media relations. Uh, he is unbelievably smart. And I affectionately refer to him as Hurricane Ed. <laughs> Ed walks into a room and he's just like, everywhere he goes but it's all positive energy man it's like he's happy to be there he wants to know you he wants to help you like this is a guy you know and he's a business magician is what he calls himself he's a consultant when it comes to marketing and promotion and things like that he's really good at it but these are people that want to be there he does not show up at these events walking into a room with a laser focus, like who can I sell while I'm here? That's not the point. Nate and I both mentioned earlier in this podcast, karma is very, very real. It's about trying to help somebody else. And that's why if you're new to networking, if you've been thinking about whether or not it's the right thing for you, if you're a business owner or a professional or a tradesperson, please reach out to us. It's not about us trying to sell anything to you. We want to get to know you. Nate, you want to get to know people, right? In your space? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Tell me if somebody came along that didn't have a good product or service that even though you might not need it, you know other people who do. Oh, for sure. By the way, have you gone solar yet? I have not. Not yet. Nope. Let me know when you do. <laughs> I can't because I have big trees on my property, but <laughs> I know people who might be interested. But that being said, I just want to you know, kind of start to wrap things up by saying you want to focus on other people it's really it's not about i'm trying to remember how i wanted to word this it, what i'm talking about is actually the fact that regular attendance which nate so expertly put forth earlier in the meeting regular attendance is important and people say well, why should i go regularly i mean it, they're just making money on me you know i'm, I'm spending 20 dollars on a lunch you know it's not making no here's why regular attendance at any networking event whether it's free or it costs money or if it's a group you have to pay to join or one that's free to join that pays for events whatever it is regular attendance leads to familiarity once I see you a whole bunch of times and we get to know each other, I will become familiar with you. Once I become familiar with you, I will then learn to 
trust you. Then once I trust you, now I'll refer business to you. Because now I know that we've met a number of times, we've talked, you're no longer a stranger. And that is why I am willing to refer business to you because we've gotten to know each other. As much as technology is advancing business at leaps and bounds, and nobody can deny that they are, I'm not a flat earther. There will never ever be a substitute for interpersonal relationships. Because Nate, let me ask you this question. <clears throat> if I had a great customer for you that was looking for your services and I said, hey, Nate, please take care of my friend, Bob, what would you do? I would um, thank you, first of all, for the introduction and uh, look to schedule the next step with Bob. Get, try to get in front of him, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Get in front of him, 100%. And I know that Nate is going to do everything in his power. He'll bleed to help my friend because his reputation is on the line. And folks, sure. that is kind of the beginning of our wrap up here for our first pilot episode of the Small Business Networking Showcase sponsored by the Eastern Pennsylvania Business Owners Network. We will wrap this up very briefly with a few announcements. How to contact us. How can you join the group? Here's the good news. Our group is absolutely free to join. There are no memberships and no fees involved. You can go to meetup.com, M-E-E-T-U-P.com. And when you search for groups, search for groups, not events. Do that. Click groups. Put in the letters E-P-B-O-N. That's Eli, Peter, Bob, Oscar, Nancy. And if you have to put in an area, put in Allentown, Pennsylvania. We'll come right up. We have over 850 members. We'd love to have you join us. You can reach me, the coordinator of the group, or Nate through contacts on Meetup. And we will be happy to answer your questions and let you know when our meetups are coming. That's that personal contact. Yes. When I was younger and I was in the corporate sales world, I was fortunate enough to have a retired corporate sales executive as a mentor, somebody who was a friend of a friend that took me under their wing. And they taught me a couple of things. First is you got to move New York speed. <laughs> Number two, if you're not five minutes early, you're late. Yeah. It's like moving New York speed. And yeah. when you're going to an event, You'd be the first one there and the last one to leave. And this man Absolutely. was a pair of a man. His name was Jim Hibbler, and I love him to death. I don't think he's with us any longer, but he was six foot four, probably 320 pounds, linebacker wow. built. He had a paw of a hand. And, and I'm wow. not a little dude. I'm six foot tall. I weigh 260 pounds. I'm not small. But he used to put that paw in my hand and he would say, just remember, when you go, you're the first one to get there and the last one to leave. I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. But I learned a lot from him and I totally respect him and his whole family for all of that. Even for me doing this for over 12 years, I've already learned stuff from Nate, which is why he is our special guest for our pilot episode of this podcast. We hope that you will share it with everybody you know. And by the way, if there are those of you out there who say, hey, I don't have any business networking meetings in my area, and I'd really like to have one, reach out to Nate and myself. We will be happy to talk to you about how to do that because we are looking to grow our organization together. Right or wrong, Nate? Absolutely. Okay, great. Do you have anything else to add this evening, sir? Either for questions, comments, coin of the realm. What do you got? Uh, no, I don't have anything further. I think this was a really good uh, start to the podcast. And I'd like to thank everybody first for, for joining and uh, listening us to, you know, listening us ramble on, but <laughs> hopefully it's some good content that you, you got to take, you know, take from this. Um, and that's really the goal is to provide some good content for you to, you know, some actionable items for y'all to take away and, and go and start implementing. And, you know, for the next, uh, I think the next couple of shows are going to dig a little in a little more deeper into the mechanics behind everything. And even if you're new at this, right, 
we we don't want you to be shy, right? And and this is the networking is the toughest thing to do for shy people, right? So if you are somebody that is shy, right? Uh, I think Gary, the next topic we're the next show podcast, you're going to dig into that, right? Episode number two will be, what if I'm new? Right. What if that? I, I mean, talk to people. What if I'm uncomfortable yeah. around others? Please tune in. I have answers to all of that, and you're going to love every minute of it. And by the way, Nate, my coffee mug this evening is dedicated to you. I would like you to read it. Oh, yeah. I'm a dad. I'm a dad. What's, What's your-, your superpower? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> my daughter got that for me when she was 16 and got a driver's license. That's life. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. It, it's been such a pleasure uh, seeing this little guy grow. He's going to turn uh, six weeks tomorrow, uh, Friday. My wife and I are just beyond just obsessed. We are so happy and, and, and so in love. Uh, little guy is, is so healthy and he's just a, a growing healthy little baby that is just the, the world to us. And uh, we're super excited to be parents. It's been a long journey. You know what? God bless and congratulations to you and your family. And I want to thank you for taking time away from that family this evening to share with us and all of our listeners and members of Epon and LVREI Club and Lehigh Valley Elite and Lehigh Valley Leads and the BIB Network and all the people we know. So, Nate, thank you again. I appreciate your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I look forward to seeing you again at our next podcast with folks. Please remember, what if I'm new? What if I'm not comfortable? How do I make it better? That will be our next podcast. We'll see you soon and take care. And as we always say at F1, have a profitable day. We'll catch you soon. Bye-bye.